everybody, this is Kelsey from the Arcane Library and I'm here to walk you through one of my newest adventures, Beneath the Black Rose. So, this is a one-shot adventure, it's horror themed, and it is for sixth level characters. And this adventure is actually part of the Bundle of Horror 2, which I'm releasing um, in October 2020. So you can either pick this up as an individual adventure or you can get it on discount in the Bundle of Horror 2, which has four horror one-shots and it's levels five through eight. So this is the sixth level adventure in that bundle. So let's jump into what's going on in this adventure. Now, it's based on a little bit of some real world stuff. All of my adventures tend to have some element of real world inspiration. Um, this one in particular was based on a famous murder mystery in the United States post-World War II called The Black Dahlia. You might have heard of it. If not, feel free to look into it. It's pretty creepy and the pictures are totally shocking, so um, be forewarned. However, this adventure is lightly based on the concept of what happened in The Black Dahlia murder. So, to begin, the characters start off in this adventure staying at the Black Rose Inn. And what's fun about this is that you can sort of spring this on your group. Um, whenever they happen to be staying in an inn, you can just make that inn the Black Rose Inn. Um, so that's sort of a fun element with how this one gets started. The characters might not even know that they're headed for adventure the night they plan to sleep in a cozy bed in a cozy inn. So let me give you the background then of what's going on with this adventure. The Black Rose Inn is haunted by a ghost named Eliza Long. And the reason she is haunting the inn is because 50 years prior, um, she was murdered in a ritual beneath the inn in a series of tunnels that are sort of forgotten about that exist beneath the inn. Um, she was murdered by a group of nobles who formed a small cult called the Eternal Scions, or Scions. I, I actually, I'm never sure how you say that word. Science sort of implies psychic abilities and that's not this. This is S-C-I-O-N-S, -S, so I'll just say scions. But um, the Eternal Scions were a group of sort of fumbling nobles who wanted to cheat death but didn't have any real, you know, necromantic or arcane knowledge. So they collected together this idea of being cultists by talking to occult experts and collecting like forgotten texts and trying to fumble their way through it. So essentially what they did was try to sacrifice Eliza in a ritual to become vampires, which as I'm sure you know is not actually that easy to do even if you're a high level powerful character. So of course they kind of failed and the god of death ended up striking them down in their hubris and being upset at their you know notion of becoming vampires um, and turned them instead into these undead ghouls that are now haunting the sub-level beneath the inn. So when this adventure sets off, what's going to take place during it is they're going to encounter this ghost a few times and then learn about what's happening underneath the inn and sort of learn about this cult, the Eternal Scions, and then finally get a chance to put the ghost to rest or defeat her. Um, so this kicks off with the encounter called you guessed it, the girl and the ghost. I, I don't know how you would have guessed that, but um, there's a creepy little girl, or at least characters, players are so skeptical of creepy children, so I wanted to kind of play on that. Um, so the adventure begins with this little girl knocking frantically on the group's door at night, at midnight, and she's crying for help. And what's happening is Eliza Long, the ghost, is chasing this little girl named Nell, who happens to be staying at the inn with her two parents as well. Um, and part of what motivates Eliza is she wants the chance to say goodbye or receive some closure from her daughter, who is no longer a little girl because what happened to Eliza happened 50 years prior. But she continuously roams the halls of the inn looking for a little girl who's sort of the surrogate for her child who she can get some closure from. So she's chasing Nell, and the characters see this scary, like, black-haired, green-eyed ghost with pale, long fingers flying down the hall towards Nell, and they have a chance to intervene. Um, and if they don't, or if they fail to sort of step in front of and protect this little girl, then the ghost of Eliza possesses Nell and tries to lead her towards Eliza's current resting place where Eliza plans to try to get some closure by having Nell wish her goodbye. Um, the characters just don't know this yet though, so they have to deal with either a possessed little girl or trying to f defend her from this ghost. So Eliza will not stick around to fight 
um, once she sees the characters intervene, or if she gets expelled from Nell through Turn on Dad or in some other way, um, she retreats. So the ghost retreats down to the tavern level where the characters are probably headed shortly. Now it's worth noting here that if, that if Nell becomes possessed by the ghost, the characters can expel the ghost by knocking Nell unconscious. They could also try to kill Nell, which is not a very heroic thing to do because she's a seven-year-old girl who's totally helpless in this situation. Um, the adventure does not require Nell's presence to really proceed, but um, Nell can be very helpful to the characters. So hopefully they don't choose to murder Hobo their way through that situation, but knowing some groups, it's gonna happen. So the adventure is written in such a way that Nell is not imperative to the adventure happening after this initial inciting event. However, I hope she does make it through. So the characters are probably gonna try to find Nell's parents who are missing. They're actually somewhere else in the adventure, which I will reveal to you soon. Um, however, they will go down to the empty tavern where the proprietor is standing in the dark, polishing a glass, staring out into space. And hopefully the players start to get a little creeped out because that ain't normal. So um, what's happening is Eliza has actually turned around and possessed the proprietor who's named Cecil. He's an orc and he isn't just some regular guy. He is actually a new creature called an arena champion that I wrote for this adventure. He is a supreme gladiator who won out amongst other supreme gladiators and earned his freedom. And he decided to buy the Black Rose and just become an improprietor, and he's actually a pretty gentle soul. But Eliza's possessing him, and so he demands the characters leave, and if they don't comply, which I'm, I'm guessing they won't, knowing player characters, um, he's gonna fight them. So that battle takes place in the tavern level of the inn. Um, Regardless of the outcome, Eliza will probably get expelled from Cecil's body either because he is, is killed or knocked unconscious. Hopefully the characters choose to knock him unconscious rather than kill him. Um, or because a successful turn on dead attempt happens against her. So Eliza will not stick around in ghost form to fight. She does retreat again to the sub-level beneath the inn. And Cecil can give the characters some information about the legend of this ghost and direct them towards the trapdoor behind the bar where they can actually reach a sub-level here. And what they'll find at first is that there's a storage area beneath the inn, but Cecil mentions to them, or they'll notice that there's a disused door. And that door, no one even has the key to it. Cecil, when he bought this place, the prior owner didn't even have the key. And it leads to what everyone believes is a defunct cistern, a well that the inn is no longer using, which is true, but it also leads to a set of tunnels behind the cistern that the cult used to use as their hideout. So the characters will notice this as they come down, they'll get to the cistern, and then there's a tunnel leading into this dungeon area. So this is where the bulk of the adventure happens. Um, it's more of a freeform exploration at this point, and the characters can encounter a variety of things. Um, there's a treasure room, and the main room has sort of valueless treasure in it that's meant to dissuade people from looking further. Like there's a, a couple chests of like copper and silver of low value and the chests are trapped. Um, if the characters hunt around that room, they may find the secret door that leads to the actual treasure room where there's one treasure chest for each of the five eternal thions who are still down here. Um, an interesting note is that each chest has a, a last name on it. Um, which is the last name of the noble family they came from, which is actually kind of a cool adventure hook that you could spin out into further adventures. So, um, what are some other things? Well, the characters could come across this encounter, the vampire hunters, who are actually Nell's parents. So this little girl was staying in this inn and her parents are undead hunters. Um, and her parents became aware of the ghost's presence. And although their specialty is vampires, they felt it was their duty to confront Eliza. And so they tried it out. They came down here, they followed her and tried to confront her, but they were not very successful. Um, Eliza was able to possess one of them and then turn them against each other. So when the characters come across Nell's parents, they are unconscious and or bleeding out and the characters will have the chance to save them, resuscitate them and hopefully get some good information from them. Um, and then after that point, the characters may continue exploring. There's another encounter called the Wailing Dead where there's this cool chasm room with a, with a rope bridge over it. And the characters 
also will notice that they're hanging cages with five skeletons in them. Now the floor's kind of been washed out in, in intervening time, there's, so there's this big chasm. Um, but these five skeletons, there's some treasure in one of them, um, a magic item, bracers of defense. And the characters, if they disturb the skeletons, um, will have to contend with this thing called a ghost wind where this big green spiritual wind blows up out of the chasm, knocking them silly, deafening them, potentially causing them to fall into the chasm um, where they'd take some falling damage. So that's sort of a fun challenge that requires um, some cleverness from the characters in order to get through. And then finally, we have our final encounter in this last room right up here. And so you guys will see there's some coffins, there are five coffins, and then there's an altar with some blood coming out of it, out over the floor. And so what this ritual called for that the Eternal Scions enacted was for them to murder an innocent woman and then bury themselves in the earth beneath her flowing blood, which is what they did. Um, they just didn't become vampires from it because the God of Death was like, what are you guys trying to pull here? And was very displeased and so turned them into mindless sort of ghoul creatures. So the characters, once they've been in this room for two rounds, the Eternal Scions will burst out of the ground with their burrow speed and attack, and characters who were not prepared for this to happen because they did not garner enough clues, or because they chose to go investigate the empty, the disused vampire coffins, um, will be surprised by this. What's more, when the characters come into this final room, the ghost of Eliza will be hovering over her skeleton on the altar. And so this is a combat encounter and also a negotiation role-playing encounter. So the characters will have the opportunity to try to appease Eliza during this fight through their actions. Um, there are things that they can do to try to help Eliza move on, to try to help her find closure. And if they succeed, then they actually help Eliza to move on to the afterlife. And if they fail, then she joins the combat against them. So that would turn the fight from a sort of normal encounter to a difficult encounter, and it will have some consequences in the aftermath. So once that final fight is determined, then the characters have um, essentially ended the adventure by determining Eliza's fate for the time being. So then we move on to the aftermath section, which talks about if Eliza was put to rest, what happens, and if she was destroyed or not put to rest, what happens. Um, the characters might either receive some blessings or some curses, depending on that outcome. Um, Eliza's spirit might reform as a wraith if she was destroyed or treated terribly. Um, and then it talks a little bit about uh, Cecil and the proprietor of the inn and uh, about Nell's family, her father and mother, and how they may invite the characters to join the Deathbringers, which is a team of undead hunters. So that's a future adventure hook. They'll write the characters the required letter of recommendation and explain the secret order to them and who they need to talk to to take next steps into joining the Deathbringers. So that's the whole adventure. And I hope you guys enjoy it if you get a chance to play through it. I hope you can spring this on your characters if they decide to stay in an inn one night. That would be really fun. And let me know what you think about it. So thanks for checking it out. And I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.